Pfizer says its antiviral COVID-19 pill can help prevent hospitalizations and deaths from the virus. The drug maker claims the pill is 89% effective in preventing hospitalizations and 100% effective in preventing death if taken within three days of developing symptoms. The FDA is already reviewing a similar pill from Merck, which has been approved for use in the UK. Medical experts still recommend a vaccine as the best way to protect against COVID-19, but doctors working on the Pfizer pill called the new drug, quote, extraordinary. I think this is one of the biggest medical advance for a single drug in virology in a long, long time. We're talking about hopefully soon in 21 that this medicine can be available. And then, of course, on a larger reach next year. For more on this, I want to bring in John Moore. He's a professor of microbiology and immunology at Weill Cornell Medical College. Professor Moore, welcome. So as you know, yesterday the UK approved an antiviral pill from Merck, which the FDA is already reviewing. How does this Pfizer pill work? Is it similar to Merck's pill? No, it's in a different class of antiviral inhibitor. The Merck drug prevents the virus from replicating its genome, and the Pfizer drug prevents the virus from assembling properly and leaving the cell as infectious particles. So they're really quite different. But is the effect the same? Do they both seem to be quite successful from what you've reviewed uh, in, in keeping COVID-19 from at least killing people who, who catch it? Well, we don't have a lot to go on because there's only been a press release and a limited data release from studies that are ongoing. And those studies are going to need to be completed, filed with the FDA, and we're going to have to see a lot more information. But based on the press release, the drug does seem to be effective at keeping people alive, although it was only a small, diff small study and a small number of endpoints. Mm -hmm. But it did seem effective at reducing the severity of disease and prevention of death in this small-scale study which is not a criticism, it's just an ongoing uh, process that study needs to be completed and the FDA will then need to review data perhaps towards the end of this year or early next year. Right, but you sure. also got to remember that these drugs need to be taken only in the first few days after symptoms. I mean, you, you have to realize that you're sick, you have to then get a prescription unless it goes over the counter and then take it in the first three or four days. Uh, otherwise, they are not going to be very effective. So it, you've got to be on the awareness that you need this kind of therapy. Right. All very sobering facts, Professor Moore. Number one, the studies are still small and the jury is still out, so to speak. Number two, you know, you've got to know you have COVID pretty quickly, which is very difficult sometimes when you're asymptomatic, because as you said, if you take these pills on day four, it doesn't have the same, you know, effect. So these pills would have to be so accessible for them to really be useful because you'd have to be able to run out to the pharmacy and get it w within hours, presumably, correct? I think that that is going to be a challenge. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've seen that there's, for, there's an antiviral uh, called Tamiflu that's been available to treat influenza for you know, most of the past decade. But it's not widely used because, again, people have to realize they're coming down with the flu, then get a prescription and then go and get the drug. Now, again, none of this is a criticism. A, a, val a drug that helps prevent severe disease and death that can be taken by the mouth is a valuable weapon in the battle against COVID. But you also have to recognize that there are limitations to what will be rapidly and widely used. Mm -hmm. It could go over the counter, but that would be very unusual. So what is the timeline then for approval on this? And, and if it does get approved, does it, you know, is there the danger that it becomes the kind of drug that's only accessible to people who have, you know, have direct contact to a hospital or a doctor? Because it sounds like, number one, it needs to be taken right away, but number two, it's not going to be everywhere. So is it the kind of thing where those who are in the know can have access to it and those who aren't won't be able to get their hands on it? Well, the timeline that was stated in press releases and media interviews is that it wouldn't be available this year. Okay, it's, it's November, so that's only a couple of months. But the, the, the filing, the studies need completing, the filings need to be made with the FDA, the FDA needs to review the data. So we're talking about early 2022. Mm. And yet, there would then need to be messaging that a new drug is available, and these are the conditions under which you would use it, and this is how you get it, and be aware of your symptoms. 
But it's also not a replacement for vaccination. I mean, you know, there's speculation in the press this morning that this would eliminate the need to get vaccinated. It, it's not the case. I mean, this is something for treating breakthrough infections in a vaccination context or treating infections if you're not vaccinated. It's not a substitute for vaccination. And, and again, rolling this out, this kind of drug out globally to countries where there is limited vaccine uptake as, as some kind of alternative, uh, that's going to be very important. So will the company make these drug, this new drug, if approved, available you know, at cost to countries that can't afford to pay the prices that Americans would pay? Here, I imagine it would be covered by insurance, but mm -hmm. that doesn't apply in many parts of the world, of course. Absolutely. A drug that's so time sensitive. Access is a very important element. Um, so, Professor John Moore, thank you so much for your insight. As always, we appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome.